Welcome to part 0 0.5 of the Half-Life Speedrun Tutorial 2018 for the scriptless category. Now, we're going to be going over the movement in this, but first things first, we want to launch our game. But instead of using the number 1 bat file, we're going to use number 0, the one with R in, or BXT plus R input. What that'll do is that'll add BXT into the game, so we get our uh, speedometer, and R input will also fix our mouse, because your mouse isn't perfectly tracked by default. Alright, so for the map we're going to use movement on comes with the game. And it's a really nice map for practicing movement because it has a wide open area. It's going to be map crossfire. Just type that into your console by hitting the tilde key. And you get this map right here. Pardon the skybox. I don't know what that's about. Um, and yeah, we have this wide open area. We can practice our b-hops and our free strafes and plenty of room to try and gain speed. Now, if you've never bee hopped before, I'm going to go ahead and teach you how to do that. Basically, what bee hopping is, is we're going to basically jump the instant we touch the ground using our scroll wheel. And one way to sort of practice the timing of that is I'm just going to run forward. And we're going to try and keep our speed as high as we can without pressing any keys on the keyboard. Just, ho just scrolling as soon as we touch the ground, trying to keep that speed that we have from jumping initially. This is how we're going to figure out the timing of our hops. And next, what I want to do now is we want to incorporate actual air strafing. And if you've never played a source game before, this part is going to be very awkward when you first start. So, what you got to do to gain speed in the air is what's called air strafing. Is we're going to hold A or D. If you look at my key overlay, I'm holding A or D, and then I'm looking in the direction, or I'm going to be looking in the direction uh, that I'm holding while I'm in the air. And I'll look something like this. And what I'll, that will do is that'll gain speed when we look in the direction of whatever direction we're strafing. Like so. And as you can see, we build a lot of speed. As a beginner, you're definitely not going to be this fast, but keep working at it. Movement takes a long time to master in this game. It... Pretty easy to learn at first, I guess. Alright, now we're going to go over a pre-strafe. A pre-strafe is basically giving us a bit of an extra speed boost uh, for our initial jump off the ground. So how we're going to do that is we're going to hold W and a strafe key and basically go diagonal like this, but we're going to turn our mouse at the same time in the direction of our strafe key that we're holding. And then as soon as we j jump, we release W and off we go with our B hop. So you release W and you air strafe. Most likely in the opposite direction, but you can do it in the same direction like so. So to just practice doing this, get that initial speed, now another quick thing is that I'm pressing E to instantly stop myself, which is very useful for preventing yourself sliding off things, because Gordon's very slippery when he slows down. So if you ever feel like you're about to slip and fall off a platform or something in the speedrun, make sure you just hit E and you instantly stop. Alright, one other type of pre-strafing I'm going to show you is called circle strafing. This is useful for when you need to turn 180 degrees, which you might need to do in a couple parts of the run. Basically, instead of holding W, you're just going to hold a one of the strafe keys and turn in the direction and jump like this or like this. Pretty simple. And then you just go into a B hop like this. And I recommend just, you know, jumping around and practicing and getting the feel for the movement. And also you can just jump around the map if you want. There's some tight corridors in here. You give yourself a challenge I'm trying to dodge through them like so. Alright, 
There's another bit of movement tech I'd like to show here. So this map has ladders for us. We're going to show ladder strafing. And what ladder strafing is, is basically you turn 90 degrees to the ladder and look up or down. And basically hold W if you're facing up and a strafe key that's pointed towards the ladder. And you go double the speed up the ladder. That's going to be very useful in a few spots in the run where you need to climb a ladder. And you also do the same thing. Down, but the opposite keys when going down. Like so. Alright, one last, one last thing too is that you can also do what's called wall strafing. I forgot to mention this in the, I guess in the pre-strafing stuff, but you can also wall strafe. Basically by holding W and a strafe key against the wall. The strafe key facing the wall. You will also get a bunch of walking speed then. For a pre-strafe. That'll be useful in the chapter on a rail if you can't chain B hops that well. And that's it for movement for the most part. Let's see if I forgot anything. Uh, here, give me a second if I forgot some. Alright, I just remembered something. If you if you're holding crouch and you're trying to b-hop while crouched, uh, you'll go very slow if you try to turn fast because crouching reduces your air acceleration. So try not to crouch when you don't have to. Otherwise, you'll have to turn your mouse very smoothly in order to gain speed while crouched. And another thing too is that the, high, the higher your b-hop speed, you also have to turn your mouse smoother and slower in order to keep maintaining or keep building speed. Oh, another movement thing in movement too is kind of advanced. It's called a duck roll. Basically, what we're gonna do for that is we're just gonna scroll the opposite scroll of our jump where we bound plus duck in the last part, and that'll be useful for doing something like this. Basically, making it so that we can make it on top of this without having to fall in this hole because our B hop's gonna lead us there. But we can just play the hop like that using a duck roll. Now. All this stuff's going to be hard, especially if you've never experienced source or gold source movement at all. So just practice around on this map, get a feel for it, and I'll see you in the next part where we'll actually start the first chapter of the game. And I'll see you then.